Hi and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video you should be able to describe how to test for the presence of reducing sugars and non-reducing sugars. In previous videos we looked at monosaccharides and disaccharides. Remember that monosaccharides consist of a single sugar molecule and a good example is glucose. Disaccharides consist of two sugar molecules joined by a glycosidic bond. Examples of disaccharides include maltose, lactose and sucrose. Now one key idea you need to understand is that we can divide all sugars into two categories. These are reducing sugars and non-reducing sugars. I'm showing you the definition of a reducing sugar here and you do need to learn this. Reducing sugars can donate an electron to another molecule. Now all monosaccharides are reducing sugars. Some disaccharides are also reducing sugars, for example maltose and lactose. However, some disaccharides are non-reducing sugars, for example sucrose. OK, so in this video we're looking at how to test for reducing and non-reducing sugars. We're going to look at testing for reducing sugars first. Remember that safety goggles should be worn throughout this experiment. We're going to assume that we're testing different foods. Just like the other food tests that we saw in the last video, we start by grinding up the food with distilled water and then filtering away the solid food particles. We then place 3 cm3 of our food solution into a boiling tube and add 3 cm3 of Benedict solution. Benedict solution contains the copper ion Cu2+, which makes the solution blue. We then place the boiling tube into a beaker of boiling water and leave this for 5 minutes. Now, if the solution remains blue, then there's no reducing sugar present. However, if a reducing sugar is present, then this adds an electron to the copper 2 plus ion. This now forms the copper 1 plus ion and this forms a red precipitate. If there's only a very small amount of reducing sugar, then only a very small amount of red precipitate forms and this causes the Benedict solution to appear green. If more reducing sugar is present, then the colour turns yellow. A higher level of reducing sugar produces an orange colour. And if a lot of reducing sugar is present, then we see a brick red colour. Now one thing you need to remember is that the Benedict's test only gives us a very approximate idea of the amount of reducing sugar. That's because the Benedict's test only shows a narrow range of colour changes and all humans perceive colours slightly differently. Scientists say that the Benedict's test is semi-quantitative. Coming up, we look at the test for non-reducing sugars. OK, in the last section we saw that all monosaccharides are reducing sugars, but some disaccharides are non-reducing, for example sucrose. Remember that sucrose contains the monosaccharides glucose and fructose, joined by a glycosidic bond. So how do we test for non-reducing sugars like sucrose? Well, the first thing you need to understand is that we cannot test for non-reducing sugars directly. Instead, we need to break the glycosidic bond, releasing the monosaccharides. Because all monosaccharides are reducing sugars, we can now test for them using Benedict solution. Imagine we've got a solution and we want to see if it contains a non-reducing sugar such as sucrose. Well, the first thing we need to do is check to see if the solution also contains any reducing sugar. If it does, we'll need to take that into account later. So first, we take a small amount of our unknown solution and carry out the Benedict's test. We need to note down any colour change that takes place. Next, we take a fresh boiling tube and add 3 cm3 of our unknown solution. We then add 3 cm3 of dilute hydrochloric acid and gently boil the solution in a water bath for 5 minutes. If a non-reducing sugar is present, then the acid hydrolyzes the glycosidic bonds, releasing the monosaccharides. Next, we add 3 cm3 of a dilute alkali, such as sodium hydroxide solution, and then use pH paper to check that our solution is alkaline. That's because the Benedict's test cannot work under acidic conditions. Finally, we add 3 cm3 of Benedict's solution and then heat in boiling water for 5 minutes. And again, note down any colour change. So let's look at some sample results and work out what they mean. OK, our first Benedict's test is negative. In other words, the colour remains blue. This tells us that our solution does not contain a reducing sugar. The second Benedict's test produced an orange colour. This tells us that the solution contains a non-reducing sugar. OK, here's a different solution. The first Benedict's test produced a green colour. 
This tells us that a very small amount of reducing sugar is present. The second Benedict's test produced a red colour. This tells us that a non-reducing sugar is also present. OK, here's our final solution. In this case, the first Benedict's test produced a red colour. This tells us that the solution contains a large amount of reducing sugar. Now, in this case, we cannot test for a non-reducing sugar. That's because even if non-reducing sugar was present, we would not be able to see a colour change beyond red. So as you can see, we can only test for a non-reducing sugar if there's either no reducing sugar present or only a very small amount. OK, so hopefully now you can describe how to test for a reducing sugar and for a non-reducing sugar. Mm -hmm.